Hey there, Pride Pack family. Welcome back to our channel. Today, I am talking about something I'm super excited about. I want to share with you all how I created my wedding journal. People call this a lot of different things. Wedding journal, wedding Bible, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to show you how to create yours. So the first thing that you want to do when you are doing your wedding planning, um, you want to try to stay organized. So one of the first things you want to do is to create a wedding journal. And this is, you can use it in many different ways depending on how you feel about printed materials versus online materials. Um, I do prefer to do pretty much everything online. So most of my wedding things I do actually do online or I have a copy or a version of it online already. But it is nice to have a wedding journal to put some things in, one for your record and easy access and so that you can take it with you to places um, where maybe you just want to just carry this around and make things easier for you. So. This is my wedding journal. The first thing you want to do is, one, go pick out a cute binder for your journal. So um, I picked this one up from Target. It's super pretty. This really pretty blue turquoise color with little gold um, polka dots in the stripe pattern. It's super adorable. And it'll just set the whole mood for your journal experience. So that's the first thing you want to do. Pick yourself out a cute journal. And then you want to go in and figure out how you want to order organize your journal. Like don't let anybody tell you that you have to organize your journal a certain way. You want to organize this thing in a way that makes sense to you because you're the one who's going to be using it to plan your wedding. So how I organize my journal is one, um, I have the Knot app, the Knot wedding planning app. If you're just getting into wedding planning, I highly recommend that you download that app. I know it's like the most widely used app. I know that you can use um, Zola, whatever too, and I tried it and it's really nice, don't get me wrong, it's a very nice app, but my preference was just the Knot. I just find it easier and more, and more friendly to use for myself. So I use the Knot. And on the knot, it gives you like a wedding planning checklist or a timeline of steps for you to do and take while, you know, planning your own wedding. And while I was going through there, just in my mind, I had a certain way of how I thought about things or how I think about things in my head um, as far as the different things that I'm trying to do or the different, what I feel are the different chunks of my wedding. So that's how I organized my journal. So, well first off, the first thing you're gonna see in my journal is actually, these are things that are like really cute things that to just make me happy and keep me in the mood. So for example, we got engaged at Disneyland um, on the Mark Twain ship. So, and they got, and we got to go in like the cabin um, where they, you know, pilot the ship. That's not actually where they do it, but you know, it's like a gimmick thing. Um, and they pick a couple special people who get to go in there every trip. And we actually randomly got chosen. And um, yeah, he proposed to me there. So it's super cute. And they give you the certificate after you're done. So I have that. And then we got the I'm celebrating pins from Disneyland. And yeah, so I keep that at the front of my binder. So it's really cute. And you open it up remind me of our engagement and then also I keep right now I've got the um oops I've got like the little mock-ups of the invitations I've been creating so um, I'm designing my own invitations because I love designing things and I'm actually pretty decent at it so these are just the um the design that I've been working on and creating for like my invitations and RSVP and stuff like that so I have that at the front of my journal and then I have five tabs these are just you know dollar tabs that you get any at any store and 
I have organized them, again, five tabs, and I've organized them as budget and timelines, um, venue and decor, attire, additional vendors, and a honeymoon tab. And I just went and used my label maker. So I actually use, I use this label maker that I got, I think I got this from Costco, but you can probably find them in pretty much any store in the office supply section or order one online. But this is just a Brother P-Touch label maker. And uh, it's super simple, super easy to use. You just turn it on, type up whatever you want. You can choose like between two fonts and different styles and things like that. And then once you're done, you just hit print and it prints it right here for you. And there's a little cut tab so you can cut it off. And then you just peel off the back and stick on your label. So that is what I used for creating my labels. And you can see them right there, the five different um, tabs that I told you guys about. So again, I decided to organize my binder in this way because this is how my brain thinks. If you think you need more tabs and to break it out even more, if you think that you need a separate tab for you know, one for invitations, one for flowers, one for your dress, one for, if you feel like you need one for every little tiny specific thing, then you should organize it that way. But I chose to organize it in this way so that it's more big picture things for me. And this is just how I organize my brain in my brain. So my first tab with the budget and timelines so the first thing I did, I have this, I just printed out a generic um, budget spreadsheet or budget planner. I found this online. You can just Google one. This is again, just some generic wedding budget planner that I found. And um, what I actually did, so I printed it. I thought about using this, but again, you should use a budget planner that fits you and your mindset and your personality. This for me was too broken down. Like if you look, if you look at this, it is so broken down by category. You know, your wedding planner, your bi your binder, your invitation, your save the date cards. Like every little step is too drawn out for me. I would rather just use the category itself. So instead, like it says stationary here. I just need the tab that says stationary and I could put a total number there. I don't need to put, oh, this is how much I did for the invitation and the menu card and blah, blah, blah. And also there's a lot of things on this budget planner that I'm not doing. So basically what I did is I went in with a highlighter and I just highlighted the things that I'm actually going to do in my wedding, the, the different stationary, the photos, the things that I'm actually using in my wedding, I highlighted them and then I'm going to go through and create a more condensed budget planner that only includes the things that I'm actually doing in my wedding. So I just highly recommend, you know, even if you find a planner that you really like but you don't you don't think you're going to do all those things, then that's okay. Go ahead and take those out and eliminate those. You don't have to do everything that it shows on. A planner if you really think oh, I don't really need a limousine don't think that you feel like you have to you know go get a limousine because you saw that in the planner and you think oh that must be what everybody does no still stick to what you want to do and just change the planner to how you want to do it I know that that should seem like duh but when you're wedding planning and you know you're trying to figure out like you you don't know what you're doing you're trying to figure things out and you start seeing things and you're like, oh, well, maybe I do need that. Maybe I should have, um, you know, maybe I, I do really need to do a wardrobe change because it says it right here in the budget planner. If you weren't planning to do a wardrobe change, then don't do the wardrobe change. You don't need that. Okay. So that's the first thing that's in my budget timeline section. And then also I have just a generic wedding day timeline that I had found again online that just gives a timeline of um, the different things for your day of coordination. And again, these are just templates right now. I'm gonna go in and 
and create a new one that's like prettier and things like that. But that's the fun thing about the binder is you can keep building on it, keep changing it. That's why you're, it's in a binder, so that you can take stuff out, put new things in. You change this, okay, take that old page out, throw it away, and put in the page that reflects what you've chosen to do now. So then, my next section in my venue and decor section in my binder, which again, I have marked off with my little label. I have, um, so we just booked our venue. If you watch my last video, um, actually, I will link that in the description for you if you haven't seen that video already. I'm um, sorry about the quality on that video, by the way. It got really, like, wonky, and we couldn't fix it, so sorry about that. The venue is really pretty, though. It is the Mount Charleston Lodge. Um, so that's the first thing that I have in my binder. We did book that location. I'm so excited to finally actually have my booked venue. If you guys have been following my adventures, I have toured quite a few venues and I finally have one booked. So we're really excited. And basically this is just their, um, their wedding guide for the lodge. So I just have that here. That's got the contact information for the lodge. Um, here it has their Wedding pricing info, I think I already showed you guys this in, again, that last video that I showed you the actual venue, but this is what comes in just their like wedding guideline planner. So I have that here, which has the menu options. I just went ahead and highlighted the menu options that we're going to be using for our wedding. And then I also have in here the contract for the wedding. So I'm not gonna show you that because it's got like um, a lot of personal information and things like that. But basically, this is just the contract that we had to fill out um, and like the payment information and stuff like that that we had to fill out in order to book the location. So I put that in there because that is an official document, that is an important document, and that's what you really want to be using, using your binder for is to keep track of your like receipts and your contracts and things that maybe you don't have an online copy of or that you just want really handy and in a place where you know that it's at so you can help yourself keep track of one who you've booked and also your budget so that is really what you want to use your binder for so I I have that there and then I also just found these cute little this wedding decor checklist. I think I found this on Pinterest and I just printed it out. And again, there were some things on here. So basically it's just, it's everything that you wanna try to remember to bring for your wedding. You know, do I have my, my welcome sign, my unplugged ceremony sign, my bar menu sign. That's what this is. There were some things that were on this checklist that I am not going to do for my wedding. For example, um, I, I crossed them out, but like table garlands was a thing that it um, has on this checklist for you to remember. I'm not gonna do table gar garlands, so I just went ahead and crossed that out. So that's what you wanna do with that. But I have that here. And then also, I found this cute little thing on Pinterest as well. And this is a final wedding venue walkthrough checklist. So these are questions that you want to remember to ask your venue coordinator um, so you can have an under, a full understanding of the rules for your venue and how these things that are specific to your wedding are going to work. So I thought this was really useful. Um, again, I just found this on Pinterest. You can look something like this up on Pinterest, but yeah, and then just cross out the ones that don't pertain to you. And then you can use that for when you are talking to your wedding venue coordinators. Okay, and then in my attire section of my binder, um, I don't really have anything in here yet. Just, this is the only thing I have. These are like some flyers from like different vendors that I have seen and spoken to you, or I haven't really spoken to you. It's like when you're going and tour, touring your venues, they'll have like their recommended vendors and like flyers for them. So that's where I got these from. So one is for a tuxedo rental place. Um, 
And then another one is for Brilliant Bridal, which is a, a bridal salon here. Now, that doesn't mean I'm planning to go shopping at either of these places, but I'm just keeping these there as options and things like that. So what I'm actually gonna really be using this section for is I'm going to be printing out some of my favorite wedding dresses that I've seen so far so that I have a reference to them when I go wedding dress shopping, which I'm hoping to do like maybe within the next month because you gotta go do that stuff early for alterations and stuff like that. So yeah, so I'm gonna be printing out some of those and I'm gonna add them into my attire section here. I will also be doing the same, I will also be doing the same thing for the bridesmaid dresses. So I'm gonna be printing out some of my favorite bridesmaid dresses and the color and things like that so that when I go shopping with the bridesmaids, um, we have a reference for the dresses that I like. Um, so we, yeah, so we have a good reference for when we are shopping. And then once we actually choose the bridesmaid dresses and stuff, I will put in that actual, a picture of that actual um, design or whatever in here. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do it for the dress that I actually pick because I don't want any um, guy, you know who I'm talking about, snooping in here and looking at my binder and seeing what dress I chose and ruining the surprise. Okay, so that's not gonna be okay, so I am not going to put the actual dress that I choose in the binder. So if you are listening, babe, because I know you are, you will not be able to sneak a peek at the dress that I choose in my binder. So think about that. Women, if you have any snooping um, future husbands, do not put your actual dress in your binder unless you are hiding it under lock and key or in case you don't care if he sees what you're going to be wearing. Oh, other things I'm going to be putting in the attire section is stuff like, um, is stuff like the boutonniere, or no, yeah, like the boutonniere design that I'm going to go with. Um, probably the bouquet is like a... A picture of what I want the, bou the bouquets to look like. Um, also like accessories, like maybe pictures of the shoes, um, the, the headpiece, things like that I will put in the attire section as well. As well as like the flower girl dress, what I'm gonna have the ring bear wear, all of those things I'm gonna just put in the attire section so everything attire related is all in one place. Okay, my next sec section is the um, additional vendors section. This section is actually empty right now because I just started wedding planning. But once I do have that, that is going to be where I put like my photography and videography contracts. I'm gonna put those contracts in here and the receipts or whatever, those are gonna go in here. I will be putting the DJ, um, his contract will go in here. I will be putting my uh, the cake, the, the cake fee and things like that. All of that is gonna go in here and if I have any um, like pictures or photos relating to those things, like the picture of what I want the cake to look like, um, my DJ, the set list that I want him to um, play and the schedule that I need him to follow for when he's emceeing, things like that, that's all going to go in this section um, of the additional vendors. And then the last section, the fun section, is the honeymoon section. So yeah, here is where you're all done with the wedding and the planning and you had a great day and now it's time to go on your honeymoon and that's why it goes in the back of the binder so this is my honeymoon section and it says Tokyo because that is the honeymoon plan and in this section um this is really this is gonna be totally personalized on what you are doing but right now since we're planning to go to Tokyo and go to the Olympics and we've actually purchased um, some tickets to Olympic events, which I'm so excited about guys. Oh my gosh I cannot wait to go there and show pictures and things um, from the Olympics in Tokyo 
But um, I, I'm not gonna show you my ticket confirmations because it has, um, yeah, important or er, secret information. Um, so I'm not gonna show you guys that, but it has my order confirmations for the tickets that I already purchased. And once I have my hotel booked, I'll put my hotel confirmation here, um, the flight information in here, um, restaurants, anything like that. Um, maps for how I'm gonna just my my plan my itinerary for what I'm gonna do out there different things like that will all go in this honeymoon section and so yeah the biggest thing like I said is really about organizing your binder in a way that makes sense to you you know do you need to have a tab for every little thing or do you want to just kind of like I have to do a category of things and just put everything into that category? You know, it really, it all depends on you, you guys. And if you don't, if you're going through it, you're organizing it one way. Cause like I was organizing it just, you know, in that way where I was doing every little thing and you find, you know, that doesn't really work for me. That's not how my mind thinks. And I'm actually making myself more confused and feel like, you know, I'm putting more pressure on myself or more, it's just not making sense. Change it up, change it to the way that you feel like works best for you. So that is what I just highly recommend. Have fun with it. Make sure you like how it looks. Make sure you think that it's pretty and represents what you are doing with your wedding and that it makes you happy. And make sure that you are printing out your receipts for things as they come in and stick them in here so you have them in one place because as you go further and further on in the wedding process and you're getting all of these emails from different vendors the ones that you chose and ones that you were considering who are still sending you emails trying to get you to purchase from them when you're like I'm I, I'm good now but they're gonna keep sending you the email so you're just gonna get you know, your emails can fill up pretty fast, so it's nice to just have stuff printed for you already. You can just go in and um, look at, you know, how much did I spend on my dress again? Um, you know, how much did I spend on the flowers? Oh, okay. You know, oh, here's my invitation. This is what I want the design to look like. And then it helps you keep your colors in mind, too, because you're like, okay, here I've got, you know, my colors here. This is what I want. Okay. I'm gonna make sure I take this binder that's showing the colors to go to my bridesmaid dresses so that I know that I'm getting the bridesmaid dresses that fit my color scheme. So just things like that. And try to keep that in mind and yeah, just keep building on this binder. I know there's not too much in here yet, but the basics is there and that's what's important. So don't feel like you have to do your binder and just fill it up. Cause trust me, it's gonna get filled up as you move along. Just you know add in what you have now and have the framework there and you will be ready to um, just have a really pleasant hopefully planning uh, experience for your wedding and again take all this with a grain of salt because this is my first wedding or anything I'm not an expert I'm just showing you guys what has been working for me so far all right, you guys, so thank you so much for tuning in to this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you found this information helpful. Uh, talk to me in the comments. How is your wedding planning going? If you are wedding planning or if you're just watching this video because you're curious or because you are hoping that your man pops the question, that is fine too. Talk to me about that down in the comments. Um, and yeah, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. I'm still brand new, but I'm working it out pretty good and I think and yeah thank you guys so much for tuning in if you'd like to receive notifications for when I post a video don't forget to hit that bell icon